Advisors to former Vice President Joe Biden have reportedly floated the idea of, of him teaming up with a younger running mate if he ran for president in 2020, including potentially Representative Beto O'Rourke. The Associated Press citing people speaking on the condition of anonymity reported the scenario Friday, while noting that current and past advisors have discussed having Biden team up with a younger running mate to alleviate concerns about his age. Biden would be 77 years old on Election Day in 2020, would be the oldest president ever elected if he won. He has said he is considering launching another White House bid to take on Trump in two years and is expected to face a crowded Democratic field. So, what I find so comical is that you look at someone like O'Rourke, who um, a lot of people had no idea even existed (laughs) up until uh, this year in this election cycle. And, you know, I've, I've said it before, I think O'Rourke was a really good candidate coming out of somewhere like Texas, and especially the preferable option when put up against Cruz. But as a national figure that, um, you know, I could instead have in place of other more well-tested progressives, <laughs> he, I don't think he passes the sniff test. But what's, what's so comedic is that it's, it's strange how just by losing this election, and you know, we, we've had this thing before. I really despise this brand of politician where we don't know them for an issue. Even with Trump, for example, people think of the border wall. They think of the, in some cases, the Muslim ban, all this stuff that while it was dumb to people such as myself, it was still a topic that you could associate and attach to this one person. In the case of both Biden and O'Rourke, what policy can you attach to them? I mean, if it's Biden, I guess you can kind of link him to uh, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act. Effectively, what this means is that we're, we're already, and we had this discussion a while back on this channel where they don't, there's this era where substance is kind of coming back, that Trump, you know, played a role in bringing in, even as in, as a detractor of his, as I would admit to being one. Um and there are still people who think it's it's time to get back to platitudes and talking about restoring democracy. Uh, this was actually very evident yesterday in Jeff Flake's farewell speech in the Senate, where you know a guy who votes with Trump over eighty percent of the time is sitting here and, and expecting me to believe that he genuinely thinks that what we are now is currently bad and it's so horrible and we have to return to our civic decency and. I just can't buy it because on the substance, he's right alongside him on all of the evil things that are being done for the most part Um, and just kind of start showing backbone after declaring that he wouldn't run for a second term. And that's political courage. Um, And it's the same thing here where you have these people who are trying to sell to me that they would be a better president than Trump without discussing any policies or positions whatsoever. You know, or, or to, to Biden's credit, he had a couple of times where he came out and he talked about wanting to, um, he rebuked a couple of Trump's decisions. Those, those are still available and that's something I'm not taking away from him. But if you want to get rid of, say, any of these seven wars or maybe, you know, advocate for single payer, Green New Deal, any of this stuff that has really um, taken off since the election cycle from two years ago, he's just not there and he it's hard for me to believe he's not aware of any of this stuff i think what's going on is that people such as himself um and you know deval patrick before he dropped out are when they when they first found out that clinton lost thought to themselves i see a way in and so in realizing that there is a group they don't they don't think it's as big as it actually is but they think there's a a portion of them 25 percent 30 of the Democrats or their base that they would call far left for being for the ideas I talked about earlier. And they're trying to kind of play the both sides. And they don't realize that when you do that and you at the same time also don't talk about your positions and don't outline, outline them and really clarify what they are, people think you're fake. And that's re- that would really hurt Biden uh, in a general election. You have him talking about the greatness of the Affordable Care Act. And then Democrats are pissed at him, or rather, you know, the actual voters, not the ones that are that elected officials that are for the most part going to ignore this, um, are saying we want single payer. 
And then you have the Republicans who, you know, hate both of those ideas and want to go back to the, uh, the plan they had before. And I, I actually don't think we have much to worry about because, as I said before, if you look at Biden's record in presidential uh, elections, he drops out very early in the primary. But it's just sad that we, we still, to this, at this point, before someone even gets the nomination, is floating the name of another person who a good chunk of people don't know any of the positions of. So it's just, it's more empty suits. That, that kind of ideology is gone and they're going to realize it when they lose this cycle.